Hello my crafty loving friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way. Today we're going to take this old wooden blueberry scoop and turn it into this cool country farmhouse decor. I'm using Waverly paint in the moss color, which is a nice light green as it goes on, but it turns darker as it dries. And I'm only going to do one coat of the moss color and then I will be doing something else later on on top of that. Of course it will be distressed and I'll show you how to do that. So here I'm just showing you the difference between the wet paint and the dry paint and how much uh, it's darker as it dries. And I really like both colors, but I like it after it dries even better. Looks really good. And I'm just taking a wet rag. This is a piece of t-shirt. Sometimes I have trouble wiping back the paint to get it to distress. But I found that just an old piece of t-shirt with a damp, just dampened a little bit, seems to help take it off. It could be the finish on this too, just helps as well. I'd like to thank our hosts and guest host for the What Would You Make for this month? Open invitation to collab with them. Uh, the two hosts are OK at Home DIY and Connie's Creative Creations. And the guest host is Six Kids and a Glue Gun, and I will have their links down in the description below. So go check them out. Thanks, guys, for letting us join in your collab. As I'm pulling back on this paint, as I'm rubbing, I'm pushing down kind of hard on spots that I really want to come off and it's mostly around the edges. I didn't do anything in the middle really. Uh, it's, it just all came off the way I wanted it to. So I'm using a little bit of Rust-Oleum Matte Spray Sealer. Because of the little tines on the blueberry box, it makes it kind of hard to get in there. So I used that on front and back. I used it all over. So now I'm gonna use uh, the Waverly Chalk Paint and Plaster and I'm going to dry brush um, some paint over the green, just a light brushing. Uh, as I'm doing this, I just don't like how that, when it, where, I, where you start, you get that extra paint off the brush. And I'll go back and show you how I fix that. Luckily, chalk paint is very forgiving so that you can go back with your damp rag and kind of wipe it back and soften those edges a little bit. I didn't want to use a piece of sandpaper uh, because I thought it would be too rough and I didn't want to take off too much of the paint. Um, so we're just going over that. And also the sealing at first helps as well so that it doesn't stick to that paint underneath. So where it's sealed first, I can put this on and then go back and rub it off a little bit where I don't like it so thick. Now that I've finished dry brushing over the whole piece, 
I'm going to take my dampened t-shirt that I used to distress with and just go over the paint, especially the spots that I'm not happy with. Now this is going to, if I really push down, it would really rub that paint right off, but I don't want it to go down through the sealer and into the green paint. So uh, just gently, this just kind of feathers out that paint and makes it a little more like it was meant to be there. And I just work on it. It takes me a while um, because I'm gently rubbing and you'll see at the top there that I push down really hard and I shouldn't have. So I let that dry once I was happy with it and I did spray it again with some seal with the rest of my sealer uh, and and uh, seal that up. So now that it's all dry, I'm taking uh, some ribbon I got from, I believe it was Michael's, in the last Michael's haul I did. And I really like this because it's the burlap with a little bit of lace on it, so it gives it kind of a dainty look and I really like it. Um, it softens it softens it up even though the paint and the everything makes it look soft anyway. But I really love the lace in the middle. So I decided to go with this one and I think it's going, the colors in it are going to play off the colors that I'm using on this. So I am wrapping this all around the bottom and then I'm gluing it all down making sure it's nice and tight and meets up nicely. Now I have a piece of this grapevine wreath that I made and I just made a circle out of it. I cut it off a bigger piece and I have this, I call it weeping willow ivy. Um, that's what it looks like to me. But I got that from Michael's on a recent haul as well. And I just cut it off because it was in one big piece. There were like three or four branches of it. And I wrapped it in around that grape vine wreath and then just stuck it in on the bottom and kind of made it stick out and go beyond the decor onto the table. I think that's gonna look really nicely like that. So we're gonna keep that just like that. Then I'm taking some of my moss and I'm gonna put it down inside the scoop part of the decor, taking a nice big heap and piece so that it sits up really nicely because I'm going to be putting something down on top of it and I want it to sit up. So there you go, there's my little white chick. I think I got that from Tractor Supply last year and I really think it's so cute and it goes in a lot of my decor so I keep it around. Making a simple little bow for the top, uh, just a couple little loops and I'm gluing it down in the very middle uh, and then just keeping the ends open so that they're, they're a nice loop as you can see here. And then I'm just cutting off another piece however long I want my tails to be or long enough so that I can trim them up afterwards and just flipping that back one over so when it comes down over the edge it shows the lace part on that side too. And then I just glue it down. I uh, burnt my fingers, I don't know how many times doing this, but, um, and I should learn, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so uh, I just glued that down in the front and in the back and then just squished it up. And I was trying to decide if I wanted it on the handle on the bottom or if I wanted it on the back and I finally decided to put it on the back. I think that looks, um, a little bit nicer and then brings your eye up a little bit with that lace so it all comes together nicely. So I'm going to add another touch to it. I'm going to add a tag. So recently, again, at Michael's, I bought one of these 
uh, mesh stencils so they have like a screening on them uh, so when the paint goes down through the screening it it gives you your picture that you want so I decided I want to do a little tag on it and I thought I'd use this and try it out I mostly bought it for the other page that I have which is uh, there's a bunch of thank yous and uh, homemade stamps on there which I wanted for my Etsy products to put on for when people purchase my products I can put a nice little tag on there for them so I just it's sticky on the back so I just stuck it down on the tag and I'm taking some paint and just dabbing it down into those holes this is going to be the base of my stamp so I believe these are little hearts and so they're going to go all over the the tag first and then I'll dry that off with one of my uh, with my heat gun just get it a little bit dry so that I can put another picture over the top of it and I'm using the moss paint on this as well so that it kind of works with the the piece that I just did Okay, so there was that and now I'm going to put one of these cute little flowers on there to go with it. Gives it kind of a springy feel I think. I think all these colors do and I am definitely ready for spring with these negative temperatures that we've been having here in Maine. So I'm using the plaster paint and I'm just going to go over the flower. So the darker spots on the flower is where that screening is and when you rub the paint over it, it goes down inside. It's basically just like a stencil except it has that screening on there. And I think it really came out nicely. I think it's really, they're really set cute set of stamps and they had a bunch more of different ones that I may go back and pick up some more when I go again. Just because this is kind of fun to do. interested in seeing more of the creators videos that have joined the what would you do collaboration check out the links down in the description below along with the link to my Etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing this blueberry scoop or any other items that I have on there thanks for watching have a great day